Hey guys, I'm Lucas and welcome to KNews55 about the upcoming Atlas V launch. However, Atlas is not the only one waiting in the wings. India's GSLV or Geosynchronous Launch Vehicle is also ready for takeoff. Now before I go on, let me also mention the recent event destroying a Falcon 9 rocket and payload. I scrubbed the episode covering the launch and also decided not to make a video about it because there is just nothing I could really add at this point. I will cover it, but in another video once SpaceX finishes its investigations. Stay tuned for that. Ok, back to Atlas and GSLV. Both rockets are quite the opposite from each other with GSLV having a solid rocket propellant core stage and liquid fueled boosters. Atlas V on the other hand steals the show with its 411 configuration featuring only a single solid rocket motor on the side and of course its liquid fueled core stage. On top both rockets are upper stages, which are used once the heavy bottom section runs out of fuel. Like this the rocket can get rid of its empty fuel tanks, which have no more use at this point. India's rocket launches first today on September 8th, 2016, 10.40 UTC and it will take place at the Indian East Coast at Satish Dhawan Space Center. The rocket will turn eastwards because it's heading, as the rocket name indicates, to a geosynchronous transfer orbit, which has such an elliptical shape. On board is a weather satellite called INSAT-3DR, which will survey our planet from a distance of 35,000 km. It's the successor to the old INSAT-3D, featuring better instruments and communication. Unlike other rockets, the GSLV does not separate its strap-on boosters, but keeps them until second stage separation. Atlas V will lift off a few hours later at 23.05 UTC from Cape Canaveral, Florida and also head eastwards but instead of aiming for an orbit, it will boost its payload to a hyperbolic escape trajectory. This will be the third time an Atlas V will launch only with a single booster. What looks like magic is actually physics because, like most rockets, its main engine can gimbal itself. This means it can move the nozzle around to change the so-called thrust vector. Would both booster and engine fire straight up, the rocket will start to spin and a good way to picture this is by thinking about a boat. Imagine it had an engine in the back and you would in addition row on one side only. It would start to spin to the right in this case and to counter that you had to steer left with the engine. This is exactly what Atlas main engine does and if you look carefully you will be able to see how dramatically this engine exhaust will strike the run of the booster. The live stream is as always linked in the description and I hope you have the chance to see it. While Atlas goes up, let me talk a little bit more about its payload. A video like this probably can't do it justice, so I will do a special about it in the future. The spacecraft on board is called Osiris Rex, named after the Egyptian Lord of the Dead. This is because it will visit a hazardous asteroid 500 meters in size which will one day impact Earth, or at least probably. Now before you start to panic, the next few real close encounters are still more than 100 years away and there is plenty time to do something about it. The spacecraft's name is of course also an acronym and stands for Origins Spectral Interpretation Resource Identification Security Regolith Explorer. I think you don't have to actually remember this. The asteroid, now named Bennu, after the Egyptian crane, orbits the Sun in an elliptical fashion and crosses our planet's trajectory at two points. To boost the spacecraft directly into a similar orbit, it is launched right at such a point to minimize the effort it takes. After this, it will receive a gravity assist from Earth a year later when it flies by to get its final orbit approaching Bennu. As mentioned, I will talk about everything in detail in a Kenyu special because it is actually quite a lot of information. Important to know at this point is Osiris will not only meet the asteroid, but also return with samples. Since the orbit intersects our planet twice a year anyways, it takes just a small course correction to make Osiris collide with Earth as if it would be an asteroid. To withstand that, the sample container is protected by a strong heat shield and the rest will of course separate and burn up. Sampling the asteroid will be done with a long arm, which will make it look like a crane standing on its thin legs. That's exactly where the asteroid's name originates from and the idea comes from a student who won the naming competition a few years ago. But that's not all the spacecraft will do. Being dangerous to us it is very important to study the asteroid's orbit precisely because it gets shifted around by the sun's radiation and of course encounters with the earth. Missions like this could in the future not only be performed by governments, but also the private sector. An asteroid mining company checking a candidate could deliver the same data for example while still making money with it at the same time. That would be really cool in my opinion. Now before I go on let me give a quick shout out to all my patrons who support my Patreon campaign. These people basically tip me for what I do and it really motivates, thanks. 
Once the upper stages of both rockets burn out, the crafts will be separated and go on with the missions on their own. INSAT will place itself in a circular geosynchronous orbit at 74 degrees east over the Indian Ocean while OSIRIS will simply fall until it leaves the Earth's sphere of influence. It will reach the asteroid in late 2019 and the majority of its mission will be performed in 2020. The return cruise will then begin in 2021 and re-entry will occur no earlier than 2023. That's roughly 8 years from now and we have to be quite patient but there is a lot cool stuff which will happen until then. Ok, that shall conclude KNews episode 55 and I hope to see you in the next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.